we are live. Welcome to Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 3 Thoughts. So, diving right in. Right, a couple of things on previous episodes. I really appreciated seeing more of Alderaan. Pretty much all we really saw in Episode 4 was Alderaan chunks where Alderaan space was. Now, let's see. I've seen some people dislike the tension and conflict between the Inquisitors, especially that the Grand Inquisitor kept antagonizing Reva, even right before she stabs him. In the original trilogy, the downfall of the Empire is consistently that they are too convinced that they can't lose. So, this is just more of that. I really appreciate it staying true to that. Now, let's see. Right, so diving into the episode, Obi Wan is still attempting but failing to communicate with Qui Gon. This is the Force Ghost line. Your call is very important to us. I really love seeing Darth Vader be assembled. Creepy, epic, and at the end of it, the iconic breathing. Awesome establishing shot of the planet Mustafar. Prove yourself, and the position of Grand Inquisitor is yours. Fail me, and you will not live to regret it. Yes, there appears to have been a job opening, and this time it wasn't even Vader who killed the guy. Progress? Okay, for how intelligent they've written Leia to be in this episode, one of the first things she says is basically, are we there yet? It's a trade route, Leia. Can't you use the Force? That's not how the Force works! I doubt you could. Oh, really? I appreciate that as much as Leia is annoyed with some aspects of this whole rescue thing, she does thank Ben for fixing Lola. And we find out that the reason she calls it Lola, the reason she calls her Lola, is that her designation is like L0LA or 4 or so, something like that. So, yeah. And Ben believes he sees Anakin in Episode 3 Gar, but then he suddenly disappears when Ben looks away. I don't know exactly who this I don't know, hallucination ghost is, but I do believe we're looking at a graduate of the Michael Myers School of Messing with Your Future Victim. Possibly even someone who graduated with honors. Send out the probes, those searchy, thorough probes. I love the whole exchange about how, you know, Ben doesn't want her to talk, and then she immediately starts talking. You know, she flags down the transport, talks to Freck with full faith that he's nice because she's used to people, that she's around being nice. Like, the least nice she's experienced was her cousin. The guy is an a-hole, but he's not exactly Imperial bad. And Ben notices there's an Empire symbol on the back of the thing. And I, I really, that's such a great, because, like, there was already... Like, this uncertainty, like, can you trust, like, the official kind of, people aren't gonna, gonna be, like, super open about being against the Empire, and thus on the side of Ben and Leia, and, uh, you know, so, I, I forget, might have been New Rockstars or, or Screen Rant, but someone pointed out, that's like the... Uh, what was it? He he made that himself, you know, so he is so in favor of the Empire that he took the time to make that. He didn't just, like, slap a bumper sticker on or something. It, yeah. And it's a great bit of tension, because once Ben sees that, what is he gonna, like, he can't say, oh, uh, hmm, we, I think we'll take the next one, because it's like, Oh, they must have seen the uh, the Empire symbol back there. Why, why else would he suddenly change his mind? And he starts talking positively of the Empire, and then stops to give a ride to some stormtroopers who are on a first-name basis with him. And they get into the transport. You can tell Ben is very concerned, because if they open fire at this range, even they can't miss. I'm kidding. I still maintain. It's not that they have bad aim. It's that most of the characters we see them shoot at have plot armor. I wouldn't know a Jedi if I saw one. Us too! That's a long story. It's a long way. You called her Leia. I thought her name was Luma. 
that was her mother's name. It very, it's it's a great like. It's a it's a good cover, you know. And he, you know, tell me you're thinking of Padme without telling me you're thinking of Padme. And some of the audio dropped out when the stormtroopers said you called her Leia. Excellent choice. It really was like a gut punch when he accidentally called her Leia. But he's been calling her Leia all this time, so of course he did. He, you know, he's not really a spy, at least not these days. Are you my real father? I mean, I feel like they had to address that fan theory. A lot of people would prefer it over Anakin as the real father. A couple of strays I found. Thought you might want to check them out. So he was just pretending to be trusting. It was always his plan to take them here. Incredibly tense during the the checking. Of, you know, Ben slowly raises his head, is recognized by the probe. Cool action scene. Holy crap, Ben took Freck as a human shield. He's not messing around. And one of the stormtroopers gets cut in half from lasers, letting us know how deadly they are. Run, Ben. There are too many of them. But then the Imperial officer shoots the stormtroopers. I didn't mean to run away. I appreciate for how intelligent they make her. She still does still express this kind of vulnerability. And the moment Leia knows the robot is on their side, she greets him, and so does Lola. He's just a loader. They don't allow him to communicate. But what if he has something to say? Very sweet. And two stormtroopers enter and look around. We see that the loader had a hammer ready in case it needed to fight. Can you teach me how to shoot? I mean, in her defense, if she had a gun when the kidnappers came and she shoots half as good as she runs away from adults twice her size, she would never have gotten kidnapped. In the show, I mean. In real life, I'm pro gun sure. I love the way they film Vader's entrance into the camp. First, it's just the shadow and his feet, his hands and the lightsaber, the cape. And then finally, the camera pans up the front of him. This is how you introduce Vader. And uses telekinesis to kill some of the people of the camp. Very sinister. I'm thinking he agrees with the Grand Inquisitor. And he's pushing for Obi-Wan to reveal himself to save these people. Now, when Vader ignites his lightsaber. And Ben draws his, but doesn't ignite and then run off. Like... I like that he's in such bad shape for, for a lightsaber. Like, think about it. For these last 10 years, Ben has been doing what he could to avoid using a lightsaber. He buried it in the desert, you know. Vader? I'm thinking he's sabering anybody he can get away with sabering all the time. Like, when we saw his... You know, this episode makes it clear Vader is in extreme agony. He is in such intense physical pain. So, yeah, I'm I'm thinking he takes every opportunity he can to, to cut someone down. Now, but, but yeah, with that said, I, I forget exactly who it was who said it, but someone pointed out on YouTube that, in, in a YouTube video, it's very weirdly, awkwardly filmed and edited. I don't know exactly what was happening. Like, is it possible that originally the sequence played completely differently and so they had to edit it, like, edit out the stuff that they were no longer using? Because it's it's baffling. Like, this is not a badly filmed show as, like, in general. So far, these three episodes have been filmed very well. But then you have this... Yeah, I, I can't help but wonder if, like, originally maybe someone else got involved in the fight, and so they had to edit that character out when they decided they weren't going to be in the fight, and that, you know, so they ended up with these awkward, awkward shots. I, I get that, you know, in part they're going for it being very disorienting, because we're seeing it from Obi-Wan's perspective, and he is very disempowered. But you can do that without it being like it's it's yeah it it was it was not filmmaking for the purpose of you know making it like like uh, showing how disempowered a character is it was bad filmmaking what have you become 
you're the one who made me. And yeah, we get some lightsaber dueling between Vader and Obi-Wan. Looks much more like something out of episode 4 than the prequel trilogy, so we are closing the gap between the two. I really appreciate that. Obviously, a lot of audience members are going to prefer a more high-speed fight. It takes a lot to give the audience not what they want, but what they need. I'm not saying, you know, you're entitled to your opinion. For sure, you are. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just expressing my point of view. So, so, some people are saying that we'll probably get at least one more fight before the show is over. I could see that. If so, I hope that it feels like... Um, I, I hope that they maintain that Obi-Wan himself is not in fighting shape. Maybe dancing shape, but not fighting shape. And the... the yeah, I, I... Like... I mean, it's kind of difficult, because ultimately, like, they're not going to mess up Ben, because we already know Alec Guinness has all of his limbs in, in Episode 4. And if, like, if he cuts off some of Vader's limbs, they're just going to be reattached. He already did that, so I don't know exactly what, but, like, yeah, I, I don't know. I hope that they make it feel final... You know, in, in episode four, I don't know if I would say that it's as much a fight as just like he's making sure to buy a little time. Because the moment, the very moment that Ben like looks over and sees they're there, they're close to the ship, Leia is safe. He immediately like, he doesn't throw in the towel, but he drops the cloak and... I really didn't feel like that was him trying to win. So, yeah, I mean, I don't... Yeah, yeah, if it's like... Maybe if they do another one, another fight in the show, before the show is over. If he, like, fights intently and, you know, for a while, and then he sees that Leia is safe, or whoever, you know, whatever the exact... And then he, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously he's not going to die there. But if if just he, he does something that shows that he was just buying time. So, you know, I don't want, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of episode three of the uh, Revenge of the Sith. But I feel like that was the climactic fight between Anakin and Obi-Wan, you know. You should have killed me when you had the chance, Charles. I mean, Ben. I really appreciate the consistent characterization of Reva. Even when Vader himself told her not to engage, she still does. And... Vader force chokes Ben, throws him into the fire. Holy crap, that's dark. He doesn't want him dead. He wants him to suffer like he did and probably still is. I don't know why fire prevents the Imperials from pursuing Ben. And the spy dressed as an Imperial officer fires off a couple shots. There's a fire between Vader and Ben. And Reva killed the person who was supposed to take Leia, hoping to trick Leia. She does run off. But, you know, it looks like, I mean, I guess it depends on if Reva is any better at chasing down, you know, 10-year-old Leia than all of those mercenaries were. So, yeah, that would actually, that, yeah, I kind of want to, I'm wondering if next week, if there's going to be like this odd clash between how much the writers want Leia to run away from adults to how badass they're making Reva. Which, you know, I, I don't have any problem with, you know, I, I think it's great that a black woman is getting to be a badass like this in a, a Star Wars story, in a live-action Star Wars story. But the, you know, some of the things, you know, yeah, uh, you know, a, a guy here on YouTube that I've had a couple of discussions with, you know, pointed out how ridiculous it is that Reva wasn't caught for killing the ah can't believe it. yeah 
Inquis Grand Inquisitor, that's it. And, you know, how she's ridiculously good at force mind reading, which, you know, way more than we've seen others, including Vader, be. Other people have pointed out the reluctant hero Ben taking care of the child Leia is the same formula as the Mandalorian. I think they're legitimately worried that people will end up hating another one of their Star Wars Disney Plus shows. They probably figured that, you know, they probably figured that they couldn't go wrong with Boba Fett. He's, you know, everybody loves Boba Fett, and we do. And it's like, yeah, you know, that, that show is not great. And, yeah, I mean, I, th I think there's some chance. They, they maybe figured, we, you know, they didn't have to put in that much effort for Boba Fett, that people were going to love it regardless, and people did not. And so they're now, yeah... Although this one has also gotten some really bad reviews, negative reviews. Now, I, ag I agree with a lot of Nerd Soup's criticisms of this episode, but one thing, they said that it was bad writing that the Stormtroopers said, you know, it's a long drive, and then two minutes later they were there. I mean, I think the dude was lying. I think it would have been pretty ridiculous if he was like, oh, it's a long story. Well, in that case, let me just completely ignore my responsibility. You know, like... It's instead of basically, like, arresting him on the spot for obstructing or, or something, you know, he's basically, like, pretending that, oh, it's, it's not that serious, I just, I'm interested, you know, like, the moment that you say no to a fascist, you know, they, they don't tend to like that very much, so, yeah. And... That is everything that I had. So, yeah, I know not everybody agrees with me. I continue to really love the show. And as long as they're, as long as this is what they do with Ben and Vader, you know, I, I really don't want them to, like, the, you know, I am a little worried that they'll end up ruining some of these characters. You know, there are three episodes left, you know, and they did really do some, they, they made some strange decisions when handling Boba Fett, but Ben, he's in a different place that we've seen, uh, um, in live action, I haven't watched the anime, I will, I will, I promise, but I haven't gotten to him yet, and, you know, the, uh, yeah, with Vader, like, it's this sort of middle ground between the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy. He's not quite at the point, like, the, the, you know, the Vader of the, the original trilogy, you know, didn't, yeah, like, when, you know, we've, we've seen what it looks like when Ben and Darth Vader in the original trilogy, when they come face to face, you know, D Darth Vader doesn't say, this is all your fault. He says, I am more powerful than you, you know, so there, there's a, there's a distinct difference between the, I, I know that's not a direct quote, the, you know, yeah, you know the quote, I'm, I'm, if you're watching this video, presumably you love Star Wars, so I don't have to quote the exact verbatim line, you know what I'm talking about, you know, he, he is more like trying to you know, in, in this one, he's trying to shame him, where in the, the, in A New Hope, he's basically trying to, like, overwhelm him, scare him, overpower him, you know, so, so these are very different Vaders and very different Bens, you know, that's another thing, Ben also was, you know, he's like, only a master of evil, you know, he's, he's not trying to reach him, he's saying, you were once good, and now you're evil, you know, the, the, we're, again, you know, here, like, when, when Ben says, what have you become, there's, like, this, this shock to it, like, he hasn't, which, again, Alec Guinness did not seem shocked, he was, like, here he comes, here's, here's Vader, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy them some time, and that's it, you know, so, yeah, the the these are these are very different. They're not just trying to redo. They're not like 
wink, wink, nudge, nudge, remember this situation. It's, it's a different situation. You know, the, the people are technically, you know, it's, th this is technically the Ben who becomes Alec Guinness. This is technically the Vader who becomes, I'm sorry, dude, I don't remember your name, David something. You carried the old guy in A Clockwork Orange up and down stairs a million times because Kubrick made you. You are a big part of why original Vader was awesome. And yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, it was a huge loss when you died. R.I.P. But the, the, yeah, the, these characters will eventually become those, but they aren't at this time. And yeah, I really appreciated that. I really, really liked the, the difference there. And the, the same thing with, that's actually, I can kind of see what people mean that Leia is almost written to be already Leia of A New Hope. Like, okay, she doesn't know how to shoot yet, and she's a little trusting and stuff, but she talks like teenage Leia, and that's weird, because she's not, you know, I, I want to say it was Sean Chandler talks about, who specifically pointed out, like, if I recall, he said something like, I have an eight-year-old, I have a ten-year-old, this is a ten-year-old who sometimes acts like an eight-year-old, you know, something like, go watch his video, he's great. Yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, the, it, it is a little awkward. I, I think they're worried that people are going to say they're, they're making a female character weak. And as much as I hate when, you know, yeah, I, I think if you can, you should try to make female characters strong, but there's a, it, it gets a little silly at times when, when she really, she is talking like, she's she's uh you know older than yeah it's it's yeah anyway that was all for this one i hope you enjoyed watching as i enjoyed watching and recording and i'll catch you next time